So Landra, thank you for meeting with me. I'd like to have a few questions with you. The first one would be, what and when got you started to play darts? Uh, so I was actually on the motorcycle with uh, with uh, with my wife, and uh, we stopped at this pub in an old town in Russell. And uh, on my way out, there was a sign on the wall that said, uh, um, "Darts, Dart Night Monday Nights." And I'm like, "Oh, you know what? I haven't played darts since I was a little kid. Uh, my dad had one, and uh, I'm going to join this league." And so I did. And uh, it it was um, it was a very pub type atmosphere with. Uh, uh, a lot of different age groups and my uh, my partner the first year was 92 and he had a little rock in order to get the dart to the wall uh, but um, he was amazing and he he had been a very good darter uh, in his day so uh, he was my partner and uh, I learned a lot from him and played a couple of years like that and then I said you know I think I want to play more and uh, so I went to a dart store and I asked them <clears throat> how do you joined things in Ottawa and uh, he introduced me to a Facebook page where's the next dart tournament and um, I went to a first dart tournament not knowing what it was it was Jill Martin doing a, a, a blind draw uh, double and didn't know anything didn't know anyone walked in and with my darts and uh, never looked back I just kept going and uh, yeah had some some success early on and uh, just that kept me going <laughs> so it's been since I guess 2016 was my first tournament. That's cool. Yeah. Good to hear. So, not long. Not you haven't been in darts long, but you've been playing very well. Yeah, it was. Yeah, <laughs> I've been fortunate. Uh, you know, uh, starting darts really at 50, and <laughs> and uh, already you know at 55 having having done some pretty cool things. Uh, so yeah, it's uh, it's been it's been a pretty cool ride. Okay, Zandra, here's a second question for you. What event in your life put your dart career in doubt, and why was darts so important to you at that time? Mm. So that's a big one, because uh, uh, in, um, in t oh, <laughs> the dog just kind of made a funny noise there. Uh, in uh, 2020, I had some uh, serious neurosurgery. I'd had a little um, uh, vertigo uh, late uh, 2019. Uh, just before World Masters, and uh, I, I couldn't drive, I couldn't even walk for a couple of weeks, and that kept going. Um, it got better. I did go to World Masters, but I was still very uneasy on my feet. And uh, as soon as I returned, they decided to do an MRI, and uh, in that MRI, they found that my neck was collapsing. So, um, unsure if that was what was causing all the rest, but uh, very quickly got a call saying the surgeons would be in touch and uh, you need to have surgery and it, it needs to be done now. <laughs> so COVID had just started, uh, all this stuff, you know, just happening. And um, I met with the surgeon in uh, June, uh, June 10th, my birthday, a meeting with the surgeon in the hospital. And, um, you know, he described a four inch incision and four days in the hospital. Um, July 16th, I went under uh, and uh, my incision was 29 staples down my back. They had to open me completely, and uh, five vertebrae are removed out of my neck with ten titanium posts and four titanium rods holding it together. So I spent uh, a month in the hospital. Uh, I woke up with some pretty bad nerve damage, couldn't use my arm, uh, had trouble walking. I uh, spent a couple weeks at uh, the uh, Ottawa General Rehab after two weeks of intensive care, and um, then was sent home. And I lived in a collar for three months uh, and uh, struggled, really struggled. So uh, in that I lost some abilities to, I couldn't turn my head so I don't have much peripheral anything. Um, and uh, so I had to give up motorcycles which I'd been on for 30 years. Uh, I couldn't even read a book and to this day I have trouble holding a book because my arms uh, go into pins and needles and uh, and so you, and I can't hold my neck so why bother <laughs> right um, so I had darts left <laughs> that's the one thing I had left and it was something that I thought I could do it's not that physical <laughs> how dumb it is very physical it's long long days of darts um, but it's still something I thought I could do and so uh, I set a kind of a goal for myself when I wanted to start throwing the dart and uh, so from July until uh, that Christmas I just 
worked on recovery and January of uh, 2021 started throwing it out. Uh, they were landing on the carpet behind you. They weren't even making it to the wall. <laughs> and uh, I had my best friend Pam, uh, thank God, uh, you know, she's been with me this whole time too, uh, along with my, my wife Helen. and. Uh, and she'd come over and, you know, just keep encouraging me and, you know, keep throwing, keep throwing. And uh, so I didn't have as big expectations anymore where I did before. You know, I, I put too much pressure on myself or whatever to, to have to keep playing well. Um, now I just throw a dart uh, and I don't have as much pressure. And I, and I think that that's kind of changed my game a lot. Not just that, but everything changed. The, how I stand at the hockey, the dart I use. Um, I used to use a 26 gram Phil Taylor bullet. Now I got this long 21 gram, the longest dart there is, Jose de Souza. Uh, you know, so, so all of that kind of changed, but so did the attitude. And, uh, you know, so, so darts was really important. It was the one thing that that I've been able to keep since surgery, and uh, yeah. So on behalf of myself, and I'm sure the viewers, we're glad that you made it through. Thank and you. And continue to play darts. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Over your time in playing darts, about how many dart styles did you go through to find the ones you liked, and which two are your favorites now? Uh, so, so again, I started with uh, Phil Taylor. I kind of stuck with his Phil Taylor uh, all the way through with a short bullet. Uh, 26 gram. I did kind of go down to a 24 gram, uh, but never felt I could go less than that. And um, uh, now it's uh, Jose de Souza, um, uh, the, the very long, very very thin dart, uh, same size of flight uh, and and that. But uh, um, and and so the I have to say the Jose de Souza. Um, is my number one go-to and then uh, the, the other dart Gomez Go, Gomez type 9 was my other dart and that was just a little bit uh, larger in diameter but it's about the same uh, kind of length uh, and weight uh, but certainly I've gone from 26 24 down to 21.7 gram so <laughs> it's uh, and it's working it's a beautiful dart and, and I can't even imagine going back to the other one at all Okay, D'Souza, if you're hearing this, <laughs> you got to send her something signed, okay? Oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make a sure you brilliant tagged. player, and a, what, a, what a class to watch. He's got such a nice throw. Mm. It's, it's really nice. In the past, or in the future, what kind of pressure, if any, when playing darts on the international stage when representing Canada? Uh, so, again, I, I, don't, I don't feel I've... I have as the same kind of pressure on me as I did when I uh, when I first went to to the World Masters. Um, I had so I put so much pressure on myself then, feeling like I had to be able to keep playing like that, and uh, and it and it's a, it's a bad mental game. Um, so you know the only pressure I had for myself at provincials was I wanted to qualify for the next day. Uh, I had this was my third provincials and the first two I never made it to the next day and that was the only thing that I cared about was I just want to play on Sunday and so I went to bed that night you know came second in my group like thrilled I'm gonna to get to play the next day and the next day was no pressure there was no pressure I just threw my dart um, so I hope that I can continue to just do that I, I played Sorrentos um, and I just just want to just relax and throw my dart. I, I've never played for Canada, really, so I don't know. Uh, I'm going to be proud as hell to have that shirt on, I have to say. I mean, my shirt said Canada as well at World Masters, and, and so, yeah, I guess I was there representing Canada. Um, but, you know, Team Ontario, that's 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 pretty huge. So, uh, um, I, just, I just want to not put any pressure. I just want to throw my dart. I would like to congratulate you on meeting and getting being part of Team Ontario. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> What's it like when a company contacts you to become a sponsor for their products, and which ones are they? Uh, so, to be honest, um, I, I, I think I have approached the uh, my sponsors on my own. Um, I'm kind of passionate about things, and when I find something that I really like, um, 
I make sure they know it. <laughs> you know, I try to reach out and I say, you know, this is just the best. And um, and then uh, so I did that uh, with my my prior sponsors and. Um, and again, when I when I met with uh, Rick and Catherine with Maximum Darts and, and the whole bull, bull shooter boards, uh, that was a me saying, you know, I can do this for you. I, I want to bring these boards. Um, the biggest thing that, that happened, I think, uh, in January when I started to play again, I was very frustrated with that short bullet. And Catherine, as my friend, uh, sent me a package. I came home to a box on my front step uh, from Maximum Darts and uh, Condor Trinidad. And um, it was a bunch of darts and flights and sizes and shapes and and she said just play around, do whatever you need to do, but get back on that board. And um, and that was the biggest uh, outreach that I think anybody can uh, get, you know. Um, and uh, so yeah. I, uh, we talked about this, the the ambassadorship um, and uh, and and uh, using their product and I and I started with the Gomez Type Nine and, and moved on to the D'Souza, but I would never have even tried them had it not been for Catherine sending those to me. So, Maximum Darts, um, Bullseye News Magazine, Condor Trinidad, uh, absolutely uh, returned me to darts. Without them, I don't I don't know if I'd still be playing. So uh, so by that amazing um, and then uh, and then barnstormers I gotta say you know barnstormers is my my really good friend Glenn he's a tattoo artist he's been doing my ink uh, for years and um, and I approached him I you know I thought you know it's not just having your art on my arms I would love your name on my shirt and um, you know this is how it kind of works and and uh, and you know he designs my shirts now he designs my uh, my dirt my turtles my donkeys my my logos my anything he, he's the guy that's behind all the art and uh, behind the works and so um, so that was like a kind of a mutual friend that kind of works together on this now and we're big comic book geeks and uh, we, we share a lot of that so uh, we go back a long way and um, so yeah, so uh, Trinidad Condor, uh, the Condor Axe Flight. <laughs> I can't, I can't tell you how good those are. They're just absolutely incredible. So. Okay, Zandra, which Canadian dart player of many is your favorite, other than yourself? Well, <laughs> I can't even say I'm the favorite, uh, but uh, <laughs> uh, and and are we looking at? Uh, you know there was there was a few uh, Canadian dart player on my first provincials. Lori Kelly, um, uh, you know, was just so kind and nice, and uh, and 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 spoke to Pam and I uh, like we'd always been around, and uh, and and so I still am very close with Lori Kelly, um, and uh, uh, I think that's a, a, a really she's so calm. She's you know in in her throw and and her abilities. Uh, but I think recently um, uh, is Marilyn Loft, and uh, I, I, yeah, I just uh, the kindest woman and uh, an amazing talent, <laughs> and uh, just throws her dart. That's what she does. She gets there and she just throws her dart, and she doesn't worry about anything. And I, I kind of watched her a little bit, uh, and I'm, she's gonna hear this, but uh, I kind of watched her a little bit at uh, the the Dan Crickshank and. Uh, just a calm, calm thrower, and uh, so uh, played her in the finals at uh, Sorrentos, and um, we both challenged each other, and it was really good. And uh, yeah, so those are my, I guess, my two favorites with uh, Lori Kelly from how she was right at the beginning, walking into this tournament, and uh, and and Marilyn Loft over long, uh, overall. So, uh, so I guess in, in, in terms of, you know, uh, the, the players that, n not that maybe I look up to, but who have had the, the greatest impact on me is, is my best friend, Pam, Pam Hall, um, who stuck by me through everything. Even, even when I wasn't hitting the board, uh, she will always be my partner. It doesn't matter. And I can't imagine darts without her. I really can't. Um, she kept me going uh, when things were, were terrible, and um, uh, always, uh, always encouraging. So, uh, so yeah, Pam, uh, 
Pam is the reason why I think I'm still playing as well, uh, because she's there. Okay, Zandra, what words do you have for people of any age who do not believe they can excel at darts? All right, it's it's not a hard sport, um, but you got to kind of you got to kind of want to do it um, at any age. I don't care what age you are. I started at fifty, really, to to put some effort into it, and I think it, 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 you can do anything if you put effort into it. So if you want to play darts do it. You, you, you want to ride a bicycle, do it. If you want to swim, do it. And don't let, don't let your own feelings not let you do something. Have surgery, do it. Hurt your arm, do it. Don't, don't let things stop you. Just, just do it. Um, at any age and at any health. Just, if you want to do it, do it. Thanks, Zandra, for meeting with me. Yep. What Canadian Dutchers use. Sorry. <laughs> and what is the story? What do Canadians do all the time when they do something wrong? Or they think they've done something wrong? Well, we say sorry. We always say sorry. Yeah, we do. Yeah. So when I throw a 180, I turn around and I say, sorry. Oh, yeah. Or I win a game, I go, sorry. Okay. It's a Canadian thing, right? Okay. okay. <laughs> so that's what the sorry is for. Gotcha. All right. All right. <laughs>